and it covers um, a couple of um, topics um, revolving around secure security. And there are other projects as well, but I, I was turning to Gantu uh, from this perspective. So I found the whole distribution why I was looking for something secure. So shall I, shall I go on with the stuff then? Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank you, thank you for, for the invitation to be able to talk to you about things I do uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, this is my workplace on the upper right uh, image and lower right this is one place in Budapest so if you happen to visit uh, you can find so many beautiful places there. Uh, I was born in 77 just uh, so I, I had uh, enough time to make familiar myself with Linux and I, I, I'm, my full-time profession is radiology uh, which is a little bit different in Hungary compared to America. I was working here for one year at, at the UAB in Birmingham, doing some animal research, but I returned. I enjoyed it otherwise. So, so that's why I know that being, being a radiologist is a little, a little bit different in Hungary. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not as a high, high, uh, high life uh, fashion style uh, specialty in Hungary, being a radiologist. But I love it because it involves uh, also computers. Uh, my subspecialty is otherwise cardiac ma magnetic resonance, which also has some uh, ties to computer programming and stuff because uh, hardware is just one aspect of it, uh, but it requires uh, good software to be able to make the most out of the system. And I'm using Linux since around 1995. The first distribution was Slackware. Uh, I get my hands on, but uh, it wasn't a winner, but uh, after a year in, from 1996, uh, we started using Debian. So that what became the base distribution for years for us and I was interested in security so I was looking for some Debian enhancement and found Adamantics by that time which was a special uh, uh, favor of flavor of Debian uh, introducing some security features and these projects started dying uh, until 2000 so I was looking for a replacement, and that's why, that's where I found Gantu, and in 2002, and I was using Gantu since 2003 or something. Um, what I, I was just, I, I thought that it would be good to talk a couple of words about the roots of the distribution. Um, there are some distributions uh, are listed here, Sorcerers, Lunar, Linux, Source Mage, which are uh, also source-based distributions, rolling distros, and uh, when Daniel Robbins uh, established the distro, he, he used these or took a look at all these distributions before he created Gantu. Uh, Sorcerers, Lunar, and Source Mage also compile packages from Source, and uh, often they are using commands, uh, which uh, has some sounds like uh, casting the spell. So installing is cast. Uh, if you uh, remove a package, you are dispelling a package. But uh, when you are using Gentoo, you are not using these funny uh, names uh, when you are maintaining your distro. So. Daniel uh, established the distro in 2002. Uh, he's based in Albuquerque. Uh, uh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. And uh, he, after he has been playing around with his distro and he saw that it just became alive on it and, and it's viable on its own, he moved on to and, and turned his
his interest to other projects. For example, he was hired by Microsoft in 2005, uh, which created some uh, echo in, in, in the community. And later on, when he returned to Gantu, he uh, founded another distro called Fantu Linux, which is uh, about making uh, improvements over Gantu. So it's uh, something which you can use to step uh, even further after Gantu and play around with it, having some enhancements. The package management system of the distro, because what makes a distro different from the others, I think package management and package system is one very important uh, aspect, which, uh, which is different from distro to distro. So uh, this system, which Gantu uses, uh, is written in Python, and it's, uh, we, we are using commands ebuild e and emerge uh, when we are installing packages. So I think this is the most important component of the system. I will go into some more details. So as I've already mentioned, I used uh, Debian for years, uh, and um, I was turning my attention to Gantu because of the security aspects. Ro it's a rolling distro. Um, when, when I was using uh, Debian, I often had the problem of outdated packages. It's not so severe nowadays, but uh, if you are using Debian stable, uh, you may also find yourself in a situation that you have an outdated package compared to what others talking about in, in a forum, for example, or if you are doing something interesting uh, in whatever field you are interested. So you may find yourself with an outdated package in Debian stable, but we also have unstable and SID, so uh, it's not that bad, but uh, um, I, I had returning problems with outdated packages. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are using a rolling distro, distro uh, basically you are skipping this problem. So you are always compiling your package from source and um, if the distro maintainers uh, are keeping their eye on the new versions, it's very easy to uh, keep it updated. And for example, I'm running uh, my server I don't know, for more than a decade now without a reinstallation. So I only had to do some recompiles when I moved the system from one hardware to, to another, but basically I haven't installed it from uh, the beginning uh, for, uh, since uh, more than 10 years. Uh, so th this is an advantage of a rolling distro. And, uh, when you are using Debian and you say, I want to do some package uh, alterations, so you want to apply a user patch on a, a given package because you, you think that there's a missing feature or there's a problem in, in some software, it's not that straightforward because you have to establish your own environment to be able to uh, compile things from source. But if you are using uh, source-based distributions, your uh, development packages, develop development headers are already there. And especially when it comes to Gantu, it's very easy to, um, to, to uh, put some minor changes or, or, or apply some patches uh, at some stages of the package installation or do some modifications, whatever you want. So it's very easy to play around. Mm. What, what makes uh, the Gantu infrastructure? I think besides the package management, it's very important to mention the package repository, which is called the Portage. Uh, in Portage, we have they divided the packages into groups, uh, like uh, uh, web clients, uh, uh, IRC servers and stuff. So all packages are distributed into groups and you can uh, keep your 
repository updated uh, using uh, a command which basically relies on rsync. So rsyncing is good because uh, it's, it's relatively, uh, so it keeps the uh, unnecessary downloads uh, at, at a low level because it only fetches the new stuff uh, when you are doing it. Uh, there's a policy that you mustn't do it too often, so you, won't, you are not about to hammer the servers, and there's a large variety of, of mirrors you can sync to. So you are updating, you are syncing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a network, so I cannot show you, but it's really easy. You, you run the command and it syncs. Uh, the primary command we are using when installing uh, uh, packages or removing packages is emerge and it's, uh, it, at the background it uh, splits the whole stuff into several stages. I will show you uh, these stages a little bit more later. So emerge is the main command and there are some Again, two specific parts of the file system which is important to take a look at on when you are using Gentoo. Uh, in etc portage, you will find the main, uh, the most important configuration files. The whole repository is located in USR uh, portage, and in where uh, lib portage, you have some important stuff as well. Uh, Lehman is a tool you can use to uh, attach some additional repositories uh, for, for whatever stuff you want. And also there's the var uh, dbpkg where you can find your installed packages. I don't know if, sh should I show this stuff now or later? Uh, because it would be... Yeah, let's, let's show it because... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I increased the font size. Uh, I don't know how uh, good it is now. Um, is it easy to read? Yeah. Yes. I'm getting localization. The midnight commander. Oh. The name. name oh, okay, size. but it doesn't That's matter. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't matter. So this is uh, ETC Partage and uh, this is the, I, I think I will go into more details later, but uh, for example, this is the main configuration file called make.conf. If I'm open it for editing, we will see what's in there. Uh, at the top we find the C flags used to compile the whole uh, machine. Uh, this is the most common uh, setting they use, so we are issuing uh, Arch native to G GCC architecture. architecture, and it also uses the same for CXS, and our C host is uh, X86, uh, uh, so it's a, a regular PC. So these are C, C compiler flags, yeah. linker flags. Yeah. The auto O2 on the top that's an optimization. Yeah. And so this will be applied to any package when you yeah. compile it. Yeah. You you can introduce some changes to this, although not to C host. So if you are changing C host, you have to recompile the whole system from the beginning. So you, you cannot do that easily, but why? Uh, because uh, then you have to build your own system first to recompile the whole system with that new system you built with the new CFOS setting. So you so have to go back to the stage one. So you first uh, compile uh, bootstrap. And, and bootstrap and then recompile. Mm -hmm. But if you are just adding a C flag, that's not necessary. So mm -hmm. you, are, you are playing around with uh, some m options. You can do it without any uh, uh, hassle. You are just altering the configuration here and all further packages will be compiled using that Entune option. And when you say the say that native, it means that the bootstrap will compile to the same architecture 
Yeah, because yeah. the bootstrap would compile to like an embedded system. Yeah, right? yeah. If if you are com right? if you are cro cross compiling, you are not using native. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, yeah, it's it's possible with Gen to to uh, compile it for another architecture on a machine, but uh, now I'm showing a system which is compiling its own packages. So it's not it, it's uh, not that complicated. And if, if this is over the top of your head, uh, feel free to ask anything. So uh, feel free to stop us. Okay. Okay. Uh, try, try to install it into before some of this is familiar. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. The yeah. I want. To, I will mention the handbook, which is very good. So I think anybody uh, who wants to know the system in a little bit more details is advised to take a look at on the Gantu installation handbook, which uh, if you go through it, uh, you, you will know your system better, uh, even if you are using Debian or, or other distributions, uh, which same a little bit applies for uh, Linux from scratch. So I, I'm going down here, you see the arc, arc, arch, uh, which is uh, the regular architecture we are using for most computers and keywords means uh, keywords means if you are uh, if you want to use some unstable package uh, in Gantu you have to keyword it and that means you are issuing a tilde and the arch name for that package uh, that uh, will uh, mean to the package uh, manager system that the it can install an unstable version for that given package. But I don't want to go into more details now, but <coughs> another very important stuff you can see here is the use flag. So this environmental variable stores several words here. And if you take a look at all these words, you uh, can discriminate uh, some features uh, you want to set for your system, like, um, here I want uh, bzip uh, to support for any packages it has an option for. Uh, and when the maintainers are creating packages in Gantu, uh, they take a look at all the actual software and they are uh, iterating over the available compiling options and often they are creating a use flag for it. So in, in order to fine tune your software, you can enable and disable use flags. Uh, you can do it system wide. So if you want for any software which has an option for compiling it with bzip2, uh, then you put it here uh, in, in at this section and all softwares will get compiled bzip2 support which has uh, this option available. And you, as you see, I'm using this system for many years now, so I have a ton of use flags uh, listed here. But otherwise, package managers and maintainers are ca can tell the system which use flags are on by default or off by default. So if you don't define any use flags for your own, you follow the default settings uh, the maintainer uh, set for a given package. But if you want to uh, do some, some, some uh, alternative use flags, then it's, it's, it's up to you. These many use flags means that uh, if the user alters these settings, there, will, there won't be any, uh, there won't be a same Gantu system. So it'll, it'll be a little bit different from system to system. You can really fine tune it. Uh, let me say that many users uh, turn to Gantu because they want to fasten their computer. So I think nowadays it's not completely true that if you are fine-tuning your C flags, uh, it will be much faster. So I think nowadays an average distribution uh, has a settings setting which will be fast enough. So you won't get so much faster if you are uh, dwelling into the details of the compiler flags and uh, there are some compiler flag masters in the Gantu community who use C flags 
like this wide, and they are enabling and disabling options of the, the compli comp compiler, and they are telling you that it's so much faster. It'll be somewhat faster, but not significantly, I think. Uh, I'm, so I'm not using the whole system to speed up. Uh, I'm using it because it's very easy to alter the, comp the compiling options when you are uh, about to install something. You see more uh, uh, environmental variable variables here. For example, by defining these video cards, uh, you will be, you will be able to tell the system which uh, monitor card you have in your system. So it will compile only those stuff in, into. Uh, for example, when you are doing compiling XOR and NASA and uh, graphical stuff, it will pay attention to these settings. And it won't compile in NVIDIA support and stuff. Only what you tell it to compile in. Um, and there are several packages you can uh, tell what kind of hardware you have and then you can fine tune your system. Um, you can also see here the make uh, Basically, I'm telling here uh, how many cores I have. So when it compiles something, it will pay attention to this setting and it will try to issue a parallel build uh, by this number of cores. And also, uh, you are telling some uh, basic settings here, where, where's the portage temporary directory. This is the place, for, uh, we, by default it's in war TMB, where it compiles the packages. Uh, you can alter it to any location you want, but uh, if you are using the default install, you have to pay attention to have enough space in this directory. Uh, because some softwares require multiple gigabytes uh, while uh, it's compiling, including LibreOffice, uh, Firefox, and, and there are some large code base softwares you will require to have gigabytes. And actually the e-build, the, the package itself, uh, makes some checks before it starts compiling whether it has e enough space available. I think I, mean, I should, maybe I should move on, maybe another one here, uh, I'm showing uh, this. Uh, you, can, uh, you can also fine tune the CPU flags you have here. Uh, you see that these are uh, extensions, so um, using this environmental variable you can issue or pay, uh, make those softwares paying attention to this uh, variable compiling itself, uh, paying attention to these settings. For example, one uh, FFM tag uh, will have implications on what you enable and disable here. Wait, uh, what, what do you think, what's the, what are the most important uh, use flags? I, I saw a flag uh, PIC, is that the position? In yeah. The yeah, position independent code, yeah, it's in the beginning. Uh, I think I, I, I have a bad habit of keeping the list on each use flag, even it's on by default. So you don't need this long list to have a working uh, Gentoo system, but uh, I think uh, position independent executables are on by default. Uh, I'm not completely sure, but I think it's on. Do you can force it if you spell it out here? Like can, I, can there be any packages which opt out of it? There, 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 can, there, there might be some, uh, but uh, I think nowadays it's a general policy to keep it enabled. So, uh, yeah, I, may, I may return to the slides after showing the main conf and move on. So, uh, how how we build system? Uh, when we are issuing the command to install something uh, and doing an emerge, uh, it has several 
extra stages uh, it'll go through while the package gets installed. The first stage is fetching the source files, which is configured in your uh, package file, and then it unpacks, uh, do some preparations. Uh, this is the time where then it applies some patches, uh, issuing configure. Uh, normal configure we call uh, the uh, GNU uh, configuration system, but it has of course support for uh, CMake and other. Uh, uh, compiling uh, uh, options for and then when the package gets configured it will compile uh, uh, according to the config configuration and when it's ready it will install but the, when installing it will only install in a separate directory not on the system and only at the last stage which is called QMerge it will move the whole package onto the system and in the meantime, you will make a list of all files it installed on the uh, system. I may show you, for example, here, I'm entering the, uh, the package database. I have I, I, these packages are installed on the system. For example, um, I'm just GNOME system log, it's installed, and these files are created when you install your compact package, and you have several files here showing what use flags were used to compile it, what were the compiler flags, and what features were enabled, but there's also a file called contents, so if I'm opening it, it'll, you will see that you will have all files installed, listed in this in this with a hash and also uh, it also knows the uh, length of the file so uh, this is a, a very easy to read text-based uh, package uh, database system you can browse uh, I think it's one of the strengths of Gantu if I want to show you uh, for example, an installation. Uh, let's install something. Uh, I, I don't know. Have, have you ever used Gantu before? Because a long time ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so example. Uh, okay. This local means that I created it. Or is it in sys only? All, all these are uh, I, packages I modified a little bit. Can you rotate? Why do you modify them? Uh, there, are, there are some, for example, I'm just... Look, Neil, that be a good example. Yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to show you an example. This one is the uh, GR security administration tool and I usually introduce a small modification for that. Um, because uh, it has restrictions on the directories you, you are you, you can issue uh, important comments, security comments and I'm altering these directories uh, which can only be made at compile time so I just added a small patch uh, to the e-build which will do some very minor modifications which is important for me later on so I'm just, this is a small program I thought that I'm showing this to you because uh, it doesn't take a uh, long time to compile. So first, uh, you can unpack. Source unpacked. If you go to Warper TMP, uh, you will see, in, so this is the temporary directory, Warper TMP portage. 
you'll see that a sysapps uh, directory has been created where we have our package and in this uh, compilation directory we have the verb directory where uh, the source code is stored and we also have a temporary directory for example we, where we have the build log we, we already have the build log here which only says that we unpack the source and if we go to the verb directory we, we see the, the whole source code is located here so it unpacks the source I'm sorry Uh, if we move on, we can prepare the package. You see that by preparing it applied two patches, uh, and this one is I this one is what I introduced here in the air build gr admin root. So I did some directory modifications, and after we prepared it. We, we are about to configure it. It, it. it doesn't need any specific configuration and compile. When we are compiling, you we can see that it uses the C flags we defined in, in the make.conf uh, file. And then it when it's compiled and we install. It says that completed installing and it installs in a separate directory, an image directory, where the, all the files which are meant to move to the system are stored. So if I enter here, I will see here an image directory where it installs all files, like uh, for example, in SBIN, it'll about to install the GR Arden utility. So, and if I would ins issue QMerge, this, this install would get moved to the actual system, and all files which have been installed would be uh, recorded in the var db pkg uh, uh, directory I showed you before. So, contents recorded and all stuff would be written there. So you can keep a track of all the packages installed and you can do modifications at, at any stage. I'm using here the abuild command, uh, which you can use to go step by step. But if you are using the emerge command, it will automatically do all these steps for you. So if I'm saying emerge grm, it will do all this stuff automatically for you and you don't need to do it step by step. What was in the emerge file of this uh, package? Uh, uh, let, let me show. So if we it's not a complicated uh, uh, e-build. E -build, so the, the package files called the e-build files. Uh, first of all, there's uh, a header of the file and uh, this API means uh, the version of the Abil system uh, it relies on uh, and these stuff which are listed here these are features of the Abil system we are relying on to so for example the flagomatic means that uh, we can alter the flags with this module uh, two chain functions means that we can uh, do some two, two chain alterations and stuff. So let's move on. Um, here we see a slot null. Uh, slot means that there can be some multi slot packages. So there are multiple versions can be installed at the same time. And here we also can see that there's only a single use flag uh, be available for this package, which is span. Uh, then it, de it lists the depending packages, so it depends on Bison, Bison, Bison Flex, and uh, this statement says that if we specify the PAM use flag, it also requires virtual PAM package. 
virtual pen we refer to some sort of pen uh, uh, software to, to, be, to get installed. So it'll check all dependencies and pulling in dependencies which are not already installed in your, on your system. Now, during the preparation phase, we can see that it applies some patches and then issues uh, some make uh, command. And so that's, that's the only thing you modified? Uh, yeah. With those two? yeah, I installed these uh, two e-patch lines here, these two. Uh, and you see that one is commented, so I was playing around with patches. And then the compilation is pretty simple here. Uh, eMake is a built-in uh, command of the whole uh, infrastructure and then installs post -install installation uh, it just uh, sends you a warning message that you have to set up the utility to be able to use it this is a very simple e-build there were some improvements over the uh, years for the e-build system so nowadays I don't have to alter the e-build to, to, to get some user patch applied. Now, we have a uh, directory in etc portage patches where we can put some custom, uh, custom patches. Like you see that I'm now in etc portage patches sysapps and you see here the same uh, name, the package with the same name, but a newer version. If I'm entering into this uh, directory, you can see that there is a sing single patch included here. So if I'm now saying uh, e build, So if I'm unpacking, this is the latest version of the package, and we have our custom patch installed in this directory. So if I prepare the package, it says that user patch is applied. So it also applied my patch. So now we don't have to touch the whole uh, package system just to apply a custom patch on a certain package uh, if you want to do some tricks there it's really easy I, I mean it's, it's so easy you you don't have to use a local repository now um, yeah, I, should I, I I may I may continue on and then okay so so as you see, it's, it's really simple step-by-step -step stuff and you are in complete control of all stages you want to, uh, of, 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 the, of your whole system. Um, again, to philosophy, it's about providing choices. So uh, when major distributions often make uh, some very very important choices which will get applied for the whole system. So this, for example, the init system. Uh, Debian or, or Fedora decides what init system it wants to use. In Gantu, they try to do it in a way that you can either use system B or you can use an alternative other packaging system if you want to. There is a separate use flag for system D and for example, the default, which uh, Gentoo ships now, is OpenRC. So it, it ships OpenRC, but if you enable systemd and disable OpenRC, everything will compile and uh, will be installed in order to have a systemd uh, in your system. I tried both, so both uh, choices are working on, on, on a Gentoo system. It's up to you what you want to use. Uh, and it's also controlled by use flags, as I've uh, already mentioned. Uh, there are system-wide use flags, 
and there are also package. You can also alter some use flags on a package basis. So uh, enable some use flag only for a single package. Uh, you you have a very fine grain control. Um, I'm I'm going back here to the etc portage directory. We have a package dot use directory uh, 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 file here, and you see that you can list single packages in this file and you can tell the system to apply a specific use flag, use flag for that given package. For example, I, I told the system that for PCI utils it, it also must do it in a static way. So I want static executables. Uh, in order and some, and some core components I told the system to make it static so if there's a problem, uh, the binary should be able to run by itself, which is not actually all the way through for all systems, all, all package. And you see that I can enable and disable, for example, disable some IPv6 for several packages, or I'm keeping GT GTK and QT flags on and off for a given package. Um, it, it is um, in your case redundant with the very very long use flag list in the in the main configuration file. Uh, th th sometimes there are some problems with uh, colliding use flags. So um, I I usually keep enabled GTK and QT as well because there are some programs using QT and uh, GTK. But often a program uh, wants you to choose in between and then you'll display an error message if both are enabled and you have to choose. And then either you are enabling or disabling the use flag on a system-wide basis or you use this package.use file and you are disabling what you want for that given package. So you have a very fine grained control on all packages. So, in this way, there won't be a, a system which will be the same, and you can use your own use flags. Then you are using a, a commodity distro like Fedora or Ubuntu. You are basically relying on the maintainer's choice, so they determine which uh, compilation flags you are. They are calling the configure script of a given package when they are compiling it. Whether they are using system D or not, or whether the FFmpeg we use a given library or not, uh, when you are using Gentoo, you you will be able to make your choices. For example, if I'm this is the command I would use to uh, install. I'm sorry. FFmpeg. Uh, v means the V flag means ver verbose, and P is pretend. So it will only pretend uh, what it'll install. So you see here the use flags for for FFmpeg. So basically, you can uh, from library to from library to library, you can tell. Uh, which one to use, which one to not use. For example, I disabled Jack because I don't have Jack installed on my system. I disabled CPU detection because I know what CPU I do have and I basically uh, configured in, in the CPU flags what, uh, what are the instructions I'm having on for my processor. So you can really fine tune your package. Of course, it can be, if you don't know do what you are doing, you may run into difficulties uh, by enabling and disabling use flags. But in, and if you are not sure, you can rely on the maintainer's choice and you don't specifically enable or disable the use flag and it will work. But you have the control. configuration files, I, I showed, already showed you the make.conf, uh, the use flag, the repositories, I showed you the packages 
dot use uh, file where you can fine tune your use flags for e a given package. There are also two uh, other files called mask and unmask packages. Uh, some Sometimes you may don't want a given version of a package to be, be avail available because it would be in collision with another software or on, on your system. Or in some cases, the maintainers mask a package because they think that it has some problems, but you decide to that you really want it, you can unmask that package. Uh, you have the control. And also packages.keywords basically contains all packages you want an unstable yeah. uh, version available for. Uh, for 64-bit uh, AMD architecture, which is the most common now, uh, the unstable uh, keyword looks like this, so tilde. You, am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, I guess. Tilde. 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 Tilde AMD 64. So uh, you have to uh, issue this keyword for all packages you want an unstable for, and you can enable this keyword on a system-wide basis. So if you want to do something, uh, want to have something which is SIB for Debian, you enable this keyword for the whole system in make.conf and it'll be an unstable uh, distribution installation. All, all packages will be uh, using the latest. Uh, if I, yeah, I don't have a, yeah, I don't have network now, but uh, there's also an online uh, Browsable repository of packages where you can see that which is the stable version and which is the keyworded version of each package. There are some useful commands like eQuery and uh, taking care of broken libraries. When, when you are using a normal distribution or ordinary distribution like Debian or Fedora, you may find yourself in a dependency hell before. Uh, I don't know if you if, if if it occurred to you ever. I had some situations. It's very hard to get out of a dependency hall if you have some circle of dependencies or uh, colliding packages. It can also occur in in can too, but uh, you can get out uh, such a dependency hall using uh, package mask. So you can mask a package temporarily to get out of of the dependency hall. Uh, and uh, there are some useful commands which can help you uh, solving problems. For example, uh, or this is the GRM utility. You don't know what packages it belongs to. You are issuing e equally uh, belongs. And it, it, it just basically broke your uh, package repository system. It will tell you what uh, uh, package the given file belongs to. So it's, it belongs to the GRM package. We can also take a look at all uh, which uh, packages uh, are depending on a given package. So it really depends. In most distributions, you will have an equivalent command for this. Um, for example, and you see, for example, here, uh, there are some uh, dependencies which are only, uh, for example, for ptlib, it only depends on FFmpeg if, the, if it was compiled with the FFmpeg use flag. So you can compile a PTB uh, package without FFmpeg support, then it won't depend on FFmpeg. You can also see that there are a lot of virtual FFmpeg dependencies. That's because there are two choices for FFmpeg. There's libav, libav, and FFmpeg. Uh, there were some years where many major distributions were switching to libav including debian and i think fedora 
uh, and after a while they switch back to FFmpeg. Uh, Debian uh, Gen 2 always kept the choice, so you uh, either could have an install with VBAV or FFmpeg based on your use flag step. Uh, what you don't have, so if you think of a, a source-based distro, you may think that if you upgrade a library, uh, there might be other libraries depending on it. So what would happen? Uh, the system will detect that some other libraries are depending on a library which are about to get replaced, and it records uh, this one and keeps the old version there until you will recompile all depending packages. So it keeps an eye on uh, library, broken libraries, but if you have a feeling that you have a given broken library, uh, you, can, you can use the re read rebuild uh, command, which is basically a script going through your system, looking for broken libraries, if it finds a broken library, it'll figure out to which package it belongs to and it'll recompile the package. So basically, if you are installing a new library which uh, breaks others, uh, you can get your whole system upgraded uh, depending on this new library pretty easily. It just takes some time, depending on your hardware. So that, that won't happen automatically? So because there are dependencies? Uh, nowadays, uh, there, there are some uh, tools in the Eagle system that they can issue an explicit rebuild for uh, given packages. But uh, not all uh, such dependencies are recorded in the package system. So you may have some uh, libraries which are not taken care of in this way, but it's very easy to take care of the, you will get a message that you have some broken libraries and then you can very easily take care of. Uh, so this is the way you are rolling your distro, so you will never get out of, out of date and if you have a major library upgrade, you can pretty easily upgrade your whole system according to the new uh, library holding. Some other useful commands like eselect. Uh, there are some multi-slot packages you can have multiple versions of. And in, the, in this case, uh, it'll install in different directories these multiple slots. And you can use the eselect utility to choose in between them. Um, for example, uh, I think now I have binutils is a very, uh, so this is a very important component of the tool chain, and you see now that I have three versions installed, and using this eselect I can select which one is currently active on my system, uh, and I can switch back and forth if I want for a given package, which uh, link, which, which one I will want to use for a given package to compile. For, for this GCC, there is a, a separate command. So as, as you see uh, here, I have three versions of uh, the compiler in installed. You see that for, for version 4.9.3, uh, there are some very specific uh, hardened uh, choices listed here. The, this one has all hardened features, both PI and SSP enabled for, for this one, the first. This one is the vanilla, so without any hardening. And these, are, these three are the uh, choices for only PI, for only passion, uh, uh, SSFP or no PI SSP, SSP. For the latest versions like 6, dot three dot zero or six dot four dot zero uh, these are all switched on by default so now they dropped these choices because nobody used the, them actually so either you are using a hardened or not 
these choices are no longer available because they, they thought that they, they are not useful. Um, what is this uh, PI and SSP? PI is a position independent executable and SSP is a stack smashing protection. Uh, these two techniques were uh, developed for long and nowadays these are uh, enabled by default uh, if you are using hardened and I think most other distributions are uh, introducing these more and more in their system so uh, these I, I think we uh, I think from some point of view this is an advancement because of hardened Gantu and some other hardened flavors of distributions uh, these security features are getting into the normal installs nowadays. Of course, there are criticism uh, that these position independent stuff and stack, stack smashing will only protect you from a given, way, given type of exploit. And there are other many type of exploits they won't protect you from. But at, at least if there are technology uh, against them, then use it, I, I, I would say. And I think Hardened Gantu is a little bit ahead of others. Uh, fortunately, other distributions are catching up. So uh, this, the overall situation in Linux community is getting better and better, but Hardened is a little bit ahead of others. Uh, another important uh, comment besides eselect is layman. Layman is the uh, command to maintain some additional repositories. There are many, many repositories available from imaging to some, there are some only some development repositories for XR and other, so if there's a developing community active focusing on some software, they are often maintaining uh, their own repository for those uh, specific softwares. Lehman is an infrastructure that gives you the very easy possibility to wire some components in your system. So about the installation, uh, I advise you to visit the installation handbook which goes through the setup from step by step. And uh, as I mentioned you, there are three stages of installation. Uh, the, more, the, the lowest level means that you are building your own system to build your system, so in, in, a, in two separate uh, runs. Uh, af after stage one, you are bootstrapping in your uh, uh, environment, and then you are bootstrapping again. And at stage three, you will have a system which will be a base for further software installation. Of course, if you are if you don't want to play around with. Uh